Now, you, you can go to the you know, vitamin store and, and look at all these different things that, you're supposed to, that you can take for, for calcium supplementation, right? Has, has anybody heard of what's called MCHC? Okay. Microcrystalline hydroxy type. So, I mean, you can take, you can go and you can get ground up oyster shells. You know, there's a calcium, calcium sulfate, things like that. So that's a, a, one more far extreme of the spectrum where it's more inorganic. I mean, actually, the most inorganic would be, uh, you know, rock salt or something like that. It's a, a calcium salt that you dug out of the side of the mountain, right? At least with the oyster shell, at least it had something to do with the living creature at one point, but it's still inorganic. And then on the other extreme, you can have these supplements that are called MCHC or micro, micro crystalline hydroxy appetite, which are closer, they're made from actual bone sources. So sometimes those are going to be a, a better source of calcium. Okay? So, I mean, I'm not trying to say one's better than the other, but usually there's research that typically something that's better absorbed into your body is going to get utilized better, and the closer it is to the original source, I mean, to what you want it to be in your body, the chances are it's going to be a better assimilated source. You know, something where it's just ground up calcium. You know, what are you going to do? Chew on a couple of rocks, or, you going to, or take something that's that at one time at least it was bone. Right? So it has the calcium that's going to be better assimilated to your body. And then there's things in between that are medium, like if you talk about calcium lactate, citrate, oxalate, things like that are more organic forms versus oyster shells. Anyway, that's... So the thing is, now we're talking about inorganic. These are the actual minerals and the structures that make the bones hard. And the, the oxalate is the framework that these other minerals are laid onto, and then that's what 65% of the bone mass is. Because right. you can talk about osteoporosis and osteopenia. Osteoporosis is demineralization of the bone, and then osteopenia is just decrease of the bone matrix. So if we're going to talk about osteo and genesis, what's that going to mean? Osteopsy, bone genesis is going to be something to do with the formation of bone. And then ossification would be more specifically the where it's actually turning it into, into bone with the mineralization and everything. So both of this together are the process of bone formation. Okay. Now this stuff, this bone development and bone formation is not something we're going to really going to be on the quiz a lot. Okay, does that mean that you can just go like this now? <laughs> no. Okay. You still need to understand it because you, you know you treat people that have bone fractures. So you want to know, okay, what goes on when somebody has a fracture and how is it going to get healed? So, okay. so is this stuff going to be uh, detailed stuff on the quizzes for this class? No. Do you still need to know? Yes. So Bone skeleton, bone skeleton is formed originally in an embryo, right? Usually you're going to start out with cartilage, and then that's going to turn into bone. And then bone growth is still continuous in adolescence and juveniles, and it continues into early adulthood. Okay, so these epiphyseal plates don't fuse until, some of them until they're in, into your 20s. Okay? And then also bone thickening, remodeling, and repair. So this is what's going to happen even in adult life, okay? You're still going to have bone remodeling, you know. What's osteoporosis is laying down of additional It's because usually of the cartilage is wearing down, so the bone needs to strengthen itself, or it's trying to, you know, if, you, if your joint is irritated so much, your body's trying to basically brace it so that it's not going to move as much, and then that's what these osteophytes are. Okay, so in some cases, even in adulthood, it's laying down extra calcium, so it's building up calcium. And sometimes these get remodeled, and you know, if you break a leg, you need to repair it. So again, these calcium bone development doesn't just occur when you're growing, it also occurs in adulthood. And then bone is going to start as cartilage and fibrous membranes. Remember I started to say before, you have two different ways that bone is formed. Endochondral, meaning from cartilage or membranous. 
So there's two different ways. It can start as cartilage or it can start as a fibrous membrane and eventually it becomes bone. And then some areas that need to be more flexible are going to stay more like cartilage. Okay? So you know, some of your nose, some of it forms solid bone and some of it's still cartilage. about the formation of the bony skeleton. Okay, so then we're talking about in the, in the embryo. And again, you have two different kinds. You can have intramembranous, where it's going to be formed between two membranes, or a fibrous membrane, and then endochondral, where it's going to replace hyaline cartilage. Those are going to be typically more of the long bones. Irregular bones and flat bones are usually going to be developed from membranes. So when we talked about the bones of the skull, those are going to be normally flat bones. So they start out as connective tissue membranes that are going to become bone. So then you're going to have an ossification center that's going to appear in the fibrous connective tissue membrane, and then it's going to go through a process that's going to turn it into bone. So I'm going to go kind of a little bit quicker through this because it's, again, it's stuck in the book, but it's not something that we're going to get into a lot of the details, but at least here you can understand that now we're talking about endochondral. Okay, so endo and chondro meaning that it's formed in cartilage. So if the, you understand the main thing is that basically bones are formed either from membranes or from cartilage. If it's cartilage, it's going to be what kind of bone you do long bones, and then the rest are going to be pretty much membranes. So the thing is, is that it's going to have to change from cartilage, the cartilage is going to have to break down before it can become bone. So like in the fetal development, a lot of the bones start out as cartilage, and then that cartilage has to be broken down and changed into actual bone. So these are the different stages, there's pictures of it here is that here you've got cartilage and then there's a bony collar around it. There's blood supply that's going to go into it. And then, so here eventually when it's formed, you're going to have one main artery that's going to, going to go into the diaphysis of the bone. And then you're going to also need an artery up here because again, remember these are separated by cartilage mm -hmm. because this is going to form a long bone. Okay? So you're going to have an artery that's going to go into the diaphysis and other arteries that are going to go into the epiphysis where it's a spongy bone. And then that's just, I mean, that's basically where cartilage changes into bone. And that <clears throat> long bone is going to continue to grow that way. Because right? you can have epiphyseal plates. And that's why it's important, like if kids have fractures and they have fractures into their epiphyseal plates, it's going to disrupt the bone, the bone growth. And then you're better off breaking the bone in the middle rather, rather, rather than you are at the pipsil plate, especially when you're a kid. So again, endochondral bone growth is going to occur in cartilage. So cartilage obviously is going to line the surface of the bone here because that's where the jo joints are going to articulate. But then that cartilage also circles around here and it's going to be at this epiphyseal plate, right? Because that's where the bone is going to grow and expands right there as it grows. So it's always going to stay cartilage until you reach adulthood when the bones aren't going to grow anymore and then that's when it completely ossifies and you don't have the cartilage plate there anymore. So this is basically where the bone growth occurs as far as length. You know, this can still grow and get thicker this way, but the bone grows in length after the epiphyseal plate. 